All right, guys, so we just bought a little collection out of Houston here today, and we're going to talk to you about it, okay? So this, I would say, is maybe 20%, maybe 15% of what he had in his collection, and we only bought 15 to 20% because we didn't do this one thing, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to make a little bit of a debate what's the right thing and the wrong thing to do from your perspective, so make sure to comment, and let's talk a little bit about this collection some more. So we got a call about a week and a half ago saying, hey, you want to come by, price some stuff out for me, and let's see if we can make a deal. So as you can see, with most of these coins, it's just a coin. And on the back, it'll say what we would pay for it. So we sat there for about five hours. We priced out every single coin, wrote what we paid for it. And then, like we said, we only got about 15 to 20% of the coins at the end of the deal. And so we ended up making you know, a little bit of money. We ended up helping out the collector. But there's a different approach that will not hold you back from buying everything. So as you'll start to learn with many coin collections, people have been buying coins for several years. Some people just started collecting and buying, and some people have collected most of their lives. So when it comes to buying their collection, some things they do well at, some things they don't do well at. And the way that you can end up buying the whole collection is just a little bit of a change in how you approach the deal and ultimately that will let you buy everything rather than just 15 to 20 percent like this collection here. Let's just break down the lifespan of somebody that buys coins. So at 15 years old Jim Bob bought a coin and the market went down and then the market went back up and then the market went down the market went back up. You meet Jim Bob, and he's 45 years old, and along the way, he was buying coins here, there, and everywhere, right? And so, what can be tough about pricing coins individually is that you're now letting him look and see, okay, I lost on this coin, but I made money on this coin, so I'm just going to sell him this coin, right? But what we do instead now of pricing everything individually is we create a bulk price. So we will price everything out on our own sheet of paper and we will say at the end we will offer 24000 okay? And so what Joe Bob or Jim Bob would have done is he said, man, I've been doing well. I bought most of the stuff if I averaged all the prices together and I paid 19000 So he's making $5,000 on this transaction. And so when you bulk price the whole deal, you're basically telling the customer or the collector that you're wanting them to think big about their collection, see what they've made from it, and seeing if they would let it go for a reasonable price. What can be so tough about pricing things, like I said, individually, is it will take a lot longer, and it, sometimes it just makes the focus too narrow for someone that's wanting to sell their collection. And that's kind of what happened with this one. We ended up, like we said, pricing everything, and then he started to pick through everything, see what his cost code was on every single coin. And, you know, that's okay. He was able to do it. It's his coins. But if you start to just change that one thing, you know, pricing out collections, it will allow you to buy not necessarily just a few coins, but all the coins from the collection. You want to go there. You want to make money on every coin. And you want to make sure that they make a profit or the whole entirety of the collection. Because when you go and drive somewhere, spend your hard-earned time and money, you not only want to buy everything, but you also want to be able to have all those coins to bring home to offer to your customers. And so let's jump into a few things, show you guys a couple of these coins. And uh, yeah, let's just show you what we paid for them. All right, guys. So the first thing that we bought, which is a pretty cool thing, I think it was a Vault Box Series 5. And he got a pretty cool coin in here. So I'm going to open it up real quick, take off this fancy little piece of paper. And he ended up getting a, a drachma, an ancient, for uh, all of his uh, money that he used for the Series 5. I think it's actually the Series 6. We ended up paying 165 for this drachma. They sell for about 200 bucks. And so, you know, if he was into it good and he ended up getting other good coins from the vault box, that can help him a lot. So the next coins that we bought from this collection were these 83 and 82 cc's, pretty low grade. We sell those for about 120, 130. And we also got this 1878S trade dollar, harshly cleaned, has some remaining luster, probably a VF or an XF. And uh, 
yeah, good little group of coins here. We ended up buying also these three cent silvers, just a nice lot of those. These take a little bit more time to process, but they're good type coins to have, especially for people looking for better dates. I think there's a New Orleans mint three cent silver in there also. Let's show you guys more of the common stuff though, because uh, there was a lot of kind of common things, but there also were a few cool things as well. So here's a good group of just stuff that normally sells for us on eBay. So when we buy a lot of this stuff, we end up getting some better margins for it. And I don't know, it's a good group of things to have as more of a, a passive. This one might sell in a month. This one might sell in two or three months, but it'll just keep customers happy and coming back. We also have this 1873 trade dollar and I was tossing it up between is it a proof or is it a business strike? Uh, let me know what you guys think down below of this coin because it would be interesting to know your thoughts. I still have to look at the die markers and maybe talk to a few people about it, but I do think this is a business strike, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, the cool things that we ended up buying are right over here. So this is a 38D Buffalo Nickel, the MS66 CAC, and it's an OGH holder. We also ended up buying this really beautiful three cent silver. Uh, I might be posting the true views of this coin while I'm showing it to you, but it has beautiful rainbows on both sides of the coin and uh, lovely. And then we have this shipwreck seated half dollar. It also came from a, a vault box and these sell anywhere between 225 to 275. This one's in AU condition, so maybe it'll be a little bit on the higher level. And then we have this 89.0 Morgan dollar. Not the nicest looking coin, but it is a better date. And it's something that we can have for our customers looking for a Morgan dollar set. And so can't go wrong with that coin either. So when you're looking at collections, there's so many different things that you have to work through and price and know the market on that it could take you a lot of time of not only being there and pricing it yourself, but also spending the time every single week studying the market seeing what things sell for, seeing if things demand a premium, or if they're not really selling very strong and you have to pay less for them. All that stuff really does come at a cost to your time and your money. And so when you're sitting down and pricing out things individually, you're basically giving that information away for free so that person can possibly take those numbers and go to the next person. And for me, honestly, like I said, people should view the bigger picture. What are they making on the deal? Is it worth selling everything to us and making a fair profit for them? That's what I'm focused on. I'm focused on making big deals and not sitting there and picking onesie twosies out. And sometimes that's just the way it goes for certain collectors. But for us, we want to be able to make you some money, but also find great coins. All right, guys. So we're going to spend a few moments talking to you about how we celebrate each kind of holiday, you know, 4th of July, Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, we end up bringing stuff to our local post office just to thank them for helping our business run. Without them, we couldn't do what we do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And so we ended up making some homemade cookies. The ladies worked really hard on these. And then we also have these Easter mugs with a bunch of candy in them. And uh, it's just cool to be able to bless people that want to help us succeed. And so let's take some time and drop these off at the post office. Okay, let's go. All right guys, so we just got home yesterday and we ended up meeting a collector locally. We ended up buying some Rattlers and a nice gold piece from them. And you know, sometimes you end up buying stuff over the phone, people ship it to you. Sometimes you meet people, sometimes you drive all the way to their house. It really all depends on where people at, how fast they need to be paid, how they need to be paid, and their mobility. You know, when we were with a collector earlier this week, he says, I don't really drive, so it'd be great if you can come out to my house. I know it takes some extra time and effort, but we ended up doing that for him. So, we have some better looking Rattlers. One of my favorites is this 1879S Morgan Dollar. It's great, Mint State 65, CAC approved. I mean, just as nice of a Morgan Dollar as you can get. Super flashy coin, beautiful piece. A uh, Civil War 1862 gold dollar in gem. Has a little toning to both sides of the coin. I mean, just some serious nice pieces. 
There's also some better dates that he had in Rattlers, which is cool. Better dates are really tough to find in old holders because uh, the lure back then was people would just like to crack these out and submit them for an upgrade. So coins in a 63 might be in 64 or 65 holders now. But I think this one is just accurately graded as it is. This is an 1890cc Morgan dollar in 63. Not the prettiest coin, but it is a key date. It's in the holder people love, and that's what we care about. And another cool piece is this 1899 Morgan dollar in 63 PL. Another tough coin to find in proof like, um, and it also is in that collectible holder. So we ended up buying some other cool stuff from some other collectors. If you want to pan down, Casey, we got just a bunch of old holders from other people that we know. We also got some type coins. So nice 95 barber half. I'm just laying them all out. It's just incredible what you're able to buy when you have connections that you work with. And we pay pretty strong for almost every coin that we that we pick up. Here's some pretty cool piece dollars if you want to back up real quick, real quick, Casey. Two 1925 piece dollars, MS66 plus. Both are nice coins and a more common date, but very lovely. Um, the Barber Half, like I was talking about, nice luster to the coin. People love the holder. This is just an old holder video, it feels like. We ended up selling some CAC approved Cleveland commemorative halves recently, so we ended up buying two more that are CEC approved. One in an old NGC thick holder with some nice toning, and one just a flashy looking coin in a rattler. You have to check out that Cleveland that's in that's a little bit of toning on the website, kushcollectibles.com, because I thought it was pretty cool when I got it in. We also bought some more generic gold that's graded. So these are 220 francs, I believe. I think they're like, the melt value is like 410, something like that. They sell for about 500 bucks and we just said, hey, you know, we want to be probably at about 400 bucks, sell these for 450, make our profit and just cool pieces of history from France. And the last one I want to show you, people love these as well, 1875S, 20 cent piece. We got this from a subscriber and we ended up trading him a coin and he gave us some cash as well. And so if you guys are ever interested in maybe offering us some coins or at least hearing out what we would pay for certain things, make sure to reach out to me, 832-538-4122, or write us on the website or email us, acousticallectibles at gmail.com, and we'll write you back as soon as possible. However you want to meet us, however you want to ship things to us, we're happy to work with you. So nice group of coins. Thanks for following along with us. Make sure to leave a like on this video. All right, Casey, what kind of coins did we get in today? What are we get in uh, we got a very successful CAC submission um, we ended up sending off that proof cameo Morgan dollar so let's uh, get into the submission and see how we did uh, see if we scored or if uh, we got disappointed again alright guys the first coin I want to show you is this 1893 yes that we submitted for a friend we felt that the coin wasn't original enough to get a sticker but he said he wanted to submit it anyway and saw, just to see what happens because we, you know, we get it wrong sometimes, but for this one, we were pretty sure that it wouldn't have passed, and it didn't. So the next coin we want to talk about is a coin that we sent for another friend. He actually wants to try to get a gold CAC on a Franklin. This one was a Proof 66. Nice cameo look to the coin. It only came back with a green sticker, which is unfortunate. And uh, just a lovely piece, but you win some, you lose some. You're not losing a whole lot trying that out. Here's an 1874, 2.5 uh, dollar gold lib. It's a better date. It's AU50. Has some nice remaining luster and it didn't sticker. Not too sure why. Don't see any distracting spots or cleaning that would be uh, too much of an issue for this coin and uh, they just didn't like it. The next coin is a really cool 1916 mercury dime with beautiful toning on both sides of the coin. It's good to have you know mercury dimes with some toning but with a better date like this like this 1916 we sure were very happy to get a sticker on this coin because, I don't know, adds a little premium to it, and I wanted to see what CAC said. I felt the coin was at least a 65 in terms of grade, but that's okay. So we have this 1882 seated quarter, kind of hard to pick up on. I felt it was mostly original, 
and they didn't sticker it. Had plenty of the shield left for a fine, but there is like a small nick in the field. Very hard to pick up on with this camera. Maybe they just saw that as some sort of minor damage and they didn't want to sticker it. Then we have our first gold CAC of the submission, 1884-0 Morgan Dollar, graded Mint State 63. Of course, this one looks undergraded. Look how nice the cheek is, problem-free fields. And we ended up getting this and ended up buying it from a guy who allowed us to submit these for him. And so just a beautiful, beautiful Morgan Dollar. So happy that one gold stickered. Then we have this 1943 Mercury Dime, Blast White, super flashy coin. And uh, I think the reason why this one didn't gold sticker is just because there's some minor spotting. If you kind of look down and try to try to focus on it, it's a little bit tough, but there's two little spots on its face. Maybe that's something that they kind of picked up on and didn't like. And that's the reason why this coin didn't sticker, gold sticker. I felt like it was undergraded personally. The next coin is this 1884-0 Morgan Dollar. It's CAC approved, has really nice kind of lava-ish toning. This probably held in an envelope for a very long time. And this one ended up getting the green bean, which is pretty cool. If it's not on the website, it most likely was for a collector or a different dealer that needed our help. Here's an 1880S Morgan Dollar. So this one didn't pass. I think it's just too hazy on the coin, which is unfortunate. And uh, that's just the way it goes. Then we have this really cool 1893 Isabella commemorative quarter. It's great at Mint State 64. It's CAC approved. Really gorgeous color on both sides of the coin. So happy to get this stickered for one of our friends. Then we have this 1820 Capus quarter. It's graded G6 by PCGS. Look how nice and original and the circulated cameo the coin is. I mean, look how nice and I don't know. I really like the coin overall. Not sure why they didn't sticker this coin. Maybe it's something that I just missed when I was trying to look them over. Then we have our second gold CAC of the submission, 45D Mercury Dime. So I ended up buying this coin with the 43. So this gold sticker ended up covering the cost of sending in the other Mercury Dime. Just a nice undergraded little coin there. Then we have this 1972D Ike Dollar, graded Mint State 67. Just a lot of chalky hits in the fields. Like, I don't know how to grade Ikes properly, but I think CAC just said, hey, maybe they overgraded this coin just a little bit. And the jump, I think, is a few thousand dollars if this coin would have stickered. But still, decent looking coin and very tough to get in Mint State 67. Then we have another Rattler Morgan Dollar. Some iridescent toning on the obverse, CAC approved. And uh, nice luster, nice grade, nice holder. Can't go wrong. Then we have this 1926 Sesquicentennial, graded Mint State 65. Also warned against sending this one in. I just didn't like the look of the coin. I felt it was too dark and didn't really reflect what a true gem for me would look like. And uh, unfortunately, they didn't sticker and they agreed with me. Then we have this 1883-0 Morgan Dollar. Nice end of roll toner. CAC approved. Definitely has some more premium just because of the holder and of the toning that the coin has. Then we have this 1887 Morgan Dollar, graded Mint State 64. Some cool pink and green toning on the coin. A little bit dark on the obverse. And it has a little bit more luster on the reverse with this nice gold patina. And uh, they like the coin. They stickered it. Here is our last gold sticker of the submission. This is 1884-0 Morgan Dollar, graded Mint State 63. And I mean, just look how clean that coin is, at least a 64 in terms of grade. And I'm glad they ended up gold stickering this coin. Super cool to be able to get that done. And last but not least, did we sticker this proof Cameo Morgan? So we're going to look at the reverse first. I mean, look how deep and cool the fields are. Didn't see any scratches or hits 
or too many hairlines and we felt, man, this coin would be great with the sticker. Did it sticker? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's stickered. Happy, happy. But thank you guys for taking a look at this CAC submission. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Please check out our website for all those new purchases. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in future adventures, and we'll see you in the next video.